What's up, you fumbling uh, dolphin floggers? Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And unfortunately, Blake can't be here tonight. He's got a family uh, issue going on. Uh, but we have two individuals helping us out. We got the Red Pill Rhino and uh, Jimmy Bones. Bring them in. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Well, first, I want to thank everyone for watching tonight and uh, not watching the State of the Union uh, where they're, I can guarantee they are going to blow smoke up your ass, soft shoe, gaslight you, uh, and straight up lie to you in regards to what's going on with the country. Uh, Absolutely. I, yeah, I've been paying attention right. to a lot of the indicators going on. 
And uh, we are looking at a possible food shortage uh, in the next year. We're struggling to maintain our levels of diesel and gasoline. Uh, we've already covered the inflation and how much all of these resources are costing the average American. And to be honest, the lower level people in the country uh, who don't quite make it to upper middle class are getting really punished by the craziness that's going on. And if they want me to give them any sympathy, it's going to be really hard because most of them voted for this shit. So yep. it is pretty what sure it, we all know. We all know where they can find sympathy. Yeah. You can yeah. find it in a dictionary between shit and syphilis. Indeed. Uh, on that note, stand by, gentlemen. I've got a uh, thing i got to fix here in the background. Uh, but okay. Two seconds. All right. Well, I'm going to pour some more rum into my tea. All right. Well, well, I will say this. Before we get into all the uh, right. nitty gritty and whatnot, we do have two more lives on the books all right now if you look at behind me the numbers at 509 we're not going to read 509 today uh, we're going to do an actual show on 509 or a video about it because it was a long explanation and we wouldn't do it justice just reading it right here right um, and this one comes from life number 507 goes by jojo b doculus.com your channel has helped me a few times quite recently I was in the Air Force and have I have service related PTSD that was stable until recently recently due to a quant. Oh Sounds no! Refreshing, but it's say not. Say it isn't so. No, of a boss <laughs> whom I've discussed my triggers with, so she does them either deliberately or because she's stupid. And with all the child support and my hubby has to pay, he owns nothing. As a retired incentive care RN, I have often thought of taking a sharp, my sharp kitchen knife and just going, uh, uh, let's just say, going up the road instead of across. Mm -hmm. He'd inherit, he'd inherit my house and super, uh, the super initiation four hundred one k. My bad, can't pronounce yeah. that word. It's, it's all right. Yeah. Thanks it's to true. what happened to me, I can. Thanks what happened to me, I never could have children and she has stopped us seeing them until at least August. Wow. I call them, I call them my bonus children. Every time I start going down that dark road, I check on one of your old clips, the divorce ones or the system surfer ones and try to hang on to the fact that we only have two more years with one until the age, until until they age out and unfortunately six years with the other because she kept him an extra year out of high school so we have to pay until the end of his final year you and blake are helping so many people i volunteer my services to vets and you guys don't know the shitty system as i feel as if i can help just one of the one guy beat these bitches it's all worth it <laughs> i am absolutely i love it i love it all right uh, that's a good one Yep. And this one is from 508. Hi, Sergeant Prop. Thank you for your shows. I'm ex British military, Brit British Army soldier, and you, <clears throat> excuse me, and all, and all your great advice kept me from doing something terribly, ter truly terribly during my divorce. I'm mm -hmm. sure my daughters would thank you also if they knew how much you helped. All right. And that. So I, I got a, I got an English soldier now. That's awesome. Oh yeah, helping cool, him, yeah. helping out across the pond. <clears throat> yeah. So well, cheers to those individuals, and we're gonna keep on keeping those numbers going up. Well, I hope so. I really do. Um, the way to get the numbers up is we have to get the exposure out there, and that's up to you guys out there. Uh, you have to share this channel, share the videos. Is as much as you can as many times as you can it doesn't matter if people get pissed at you the hell with them because i have no. quite a few fans who hated me in the beginning and then they got divorced and then lo and behold they tune into my show after that <laughs> because they realize yeah. it's real it's mm -hmm. happening to everyone no one is immune from getting the big weenie from divorce court and family court I'm just saying and that's okay. happening across the entire western world 
Right. England is terrible. Uh, I would say uh, America is probably a little bit worse, and Canada is absolutely atrocious. Oh. So I, I just, uh, wow. I, I don't know what to say, but I'm honored I'm able to help people, and it's up to you to share the, share the message so we can uh, save as many people as we can. Now, when I originally started this, it wasn't to actually stop people from uh, committing suicide. I did it basically to educate the youth and the men out there of the perils of uh, feminism and divorce court and family court. And I did it using comedy and one of the unintended consequences. Uh, and I didn't know this at the time, but my, you know, my videos are talking people down, you know, from the ledge. And uh, I'm, I'm beyond happy that uh, that's taken place. So, well, yeah, all absolutely. right. Absolutely. Now, again, we are going to hear the State of the Union where they're going to lie to you and blow smoke up your ass, but we're not going to do that here. We just tell you the truth. No. And if you don't like it, you're probably living a lie and you need to basically un F your life. <laughs> how we say. Yeah. Um, uh, on that note. Uh, we've had some interesting stuff go in the last week. Uh, one of those being a certain uh, white cloudy thing in the sky floating across the United States from China. Okay, now hang, uh, on, hang on a minute. Yeah. So what happened during that whole, you know, balloon overflight? Well, uh -huh. I would say it's mental prestidigitation because there are things that were done while uh, the attention was up in the sky. So mm -hmm. red pill, go down the list. Yeah, uh, the biggest one here, uh, I'll throw that on the screen now. This is from the Daily Mail in the UK. Uh, <laughs> this is a big one to be a distraction with a balloon here. AOC and three other members of Congress paid Chinese foreign agent. Financial records show several House lawmakers handed over advertising cash to U.S.-based Hong Kong newspaper to help with their election campaigns. How pleasant. And we can get in this article a little bit here, but this, this right. is astounding. Well, I just got to ask some questions. All right, mm -hmm. so we all know what AOC stands for. It stands for all-out cunt. <laughs> Why is she sending money overseas for a campaign uh -huh. she's running for here in America? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's not like she gets enough donations that are outside of her district as enough. Yeah, no, it's totally not suspicious at all. Um, no, no. Anyway, we'll get into this a little bit here. Uh, AOC and at least three other House members, at least three other House members. So these are all elective officials uh, just acting in their own interests. Interest. Uh, they paid thousands in advertising costs to a Chinese newspaper classified by the Justice Department as a foreign agent. It comes as tensions are reaching an all-time high between Washington and Beijing uh, as new GOP-controlled House zeroes in on addressing competition and the rising threat from China. AOC for re-election in her New York district spent nearly 1500 on advertising with Singtown newspapers during the 2022 midterms a Fox News digital review of campaign finance records reveals. The Federal Election Commission FEC filings show that Representative Grace Ming, DNY, Rep. Nicole uh, Maliatakis, uh, Republican New York, and Kevin Mullen, De Democrat California, also dropped between 1,000 and 7,000 to various Singtao entities in a re-election campaign advertising expenses. Singtao U.S. is a subsidiary of Hong Kong-based Singtao News Corporation. So, yeah, they're just uh, now, sending I, money. Now, I could be wrong here. I believe there are laws and rules on the books that if you are an elected public official and you have any dealings with foreign agents, they are to be mm -hmm. disclosed. Mm-hmm. Well, they're supposed to be, but yeah. sounds like that didn't happen here. At least not by uh, all out cunt. No, I, I don't I don't believe so. Yeah, you know, Mrs. All right. horse teeth, good tits. So <laughs> yeah. I, I scrolled down so I didn't have to look at her face. <laughs> yeah, that's like her Thanks. only saving grace, I think, is uh yeah. she still has a set of perky tits that haven't uh 
started running for the floor. Yeah. Even then, uh, sorry, I got to pass. <laughs> yeah. I know. All I right. know. Can you imagine yeah. Pelosi's old wrinkled up oh, beagle God. ears flopping around? Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn it. Thanks Pop, for that. Put that in. Yeah, I thank you, man. Thank you. You know what? You know what? Here, here. Just, just, just because of that. <laughs> there. <laughs> all right. Moving right along. Uh, the all newspaper right, right. is considered to be pro Beijing. The four U.S. campaigns spent advertising expenses at the Chinese owned entity after the Department of Justice forced it to register as a Chinese foreign agent in August 2021. China has increasingly uh, come onto the U.S. radar as a main adversary, specifically in terms of competition and global defenses. Beijing is growing more ire towards Washington with politicians acknowledging the autonomy of the island nation Taiwan, which the Chinese Communist Party has long claimed as their territory. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll, I'll wrap this up because we don't have to read the whole article here, but to counter the U.S. claims, China has ramped up its military drills and operations in the South China Sea near the island. Uh, again, more than half of the content of Sing Tao's U.S. operation is purchased from another Chinese company, Star Production, Shenzhen Limited, according to Foreign Agents Registration Act filings. So, all right, I'd now, say this is a little bit dirty business here. Well, what most people don't understand is the companies in China all have a clause when they're allowed to do business in the country that at any time the CCP can seize the company for the best interests of China. So over in China, you think they have capitalism going on. They don't. It is actually communist controlled capitalism. And we've seen the effects of this over the, over the, past few years i believe there's uh, a bunch of chips that uh, were made in china that mm. basically had built in uh, surveillance inside them and trump went so far as to say we're not doing business in with china in that regard all right we have uh, what is it tiktok yep all right mm -hmm. have you ever read the terms of service on tiktok nope uh, I, haven't even I, I have personally not no i have skimmed them and there is a very scary clause in there that if you download the app, they have access to all of your network, all of your hard drives. Yikes. Yeah. Fun stuff. So, look, it, I was thinking about messing around with TikTok, but do I, you know, when I, when I heard that, I'm like, nah, if somebody, if somebody else out there, out there wants to start a TikTok and post my stuff on there, that's fine. But I don't think it'll be coming from, you know, directly from me at least. Oh no! If right. if they posted anything from your channel, it would get banned right away. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and I'm doing my job. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I went and bought my new phone after my uh, drunken incident in South Dakota with my dad the other day, um, or a while back, the phone came pre-downloaded with TikTok on it. Oh no! Wow. First first thing I did was uninstall that son of a bitch. I was like, oh, nope. That's pretty I have it. actually have, Yeah. It's odd to see TikTok is now bloatware on a phone. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was it was auto downloaded on my phone. I was just going through, scrolling through the apps, making sure everything was working right. Yeah, TikTok, I didn't download that. I'm gonna have to talk to some of my buddies um who work on the Intel side if TikTok leaves behind any residue software that still spies on you after you delete it. It That'll wouldn't surprise me. Oh. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. Um, I'm getting kind of tired of this shit. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't there a list of like two million agents that were operating within this country, and that was like three or four years ago? And something like that. Yeah, and I can't recall if we've done anything about this list. Why have mm. we rounded these people up and kicked them the hell out of the country? I just saw the the uh, article that uh, in New York the Chinese had their yep. own police station. They shut yep. that down. Yep. Why are we Why are we allowing this to happen? We as a country need to put our foot down, or at least put our foot in somebody's ass in regards to this, you know, flagrant abuse of yeah. our sovereignty. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't give you any definitive uh, factual answers, but I can tell you I have a very strong feeling that certain administrations allegedly may be bought and paid for. Yes, because we do have the best government money can buy. Unfortunately, yep. us as the taxpayers, we can't afford it. Yeah. What are you going to yeah. do? Right. So uh, that was the, the first article there, but it gets it gets better. So, All right. Let's move into this now, because uh, just when you think you've heard enough, oh, no, there is definitely more. Uh, this one here interests me. Why? Uh, the Biden regime quietly frees one of the 9-11 terrorist planners from Gitmo as the whole country watches the Chinese spy balloon. So there you go. Again, we're all looking up the sky, waiting to figure out what uh, this administration is going to do about a balloon that should have never been here to begin with. Uh -huh. uh, so releasing... Um, terrorists so that's fun let's let's check out the article a little bit though uh right. as the country was preoccupied with the chinese spy balloon last week one of the 9-11 terrorist planners was quietly released from guantanamo bay in cuba by the biden regime on thursday majid khan now 42 was moved from belize his legal team announced today more than 16 years after he was brought to guantanamo bay and almost a year after he completed a military commission sentence there, pursuant to a plea and cooperation agreement with U.S. authorities, Majid Khan was transferred to Belize, his legal team said in a statement. Khan is one of the few detainees to be relo relocated uh, to the Western Hemisphere and the first to be resettled under the Biden regime. Isn't that lovely? Yes, and Wonderful. I hope there's some uh, people in Belize who are very unhappy with this individual and arrange for bad things to happen to him, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I wouldn't yeah. condone it, but I would understand. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I would condone it. But listen, yeah, just a little that whole bit. thing <laughs> was a, a huge goat screw. We can do a whole show on 9 11 and all the stuff that fell through the cracks and all of the impossible stuff they sold us after the fact. I'm going to be honest. I don't believe it. All right. I, I find it hard to believe that a bunch of crack pots with box cutters did that much damage. Oh, no, no. <laughs> without, without at least some help from the inside. Yeah. In yeah. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, but yeah, that, that is definitely a, you could spend days talking about that one for sure. Yeah. And I, um, I, I've had some, uh, some of the fans have actually sent in material in regards to the whole nine 11 thing. Yeah. And, uh, uh, there was a whole organization of architects who basically, uh, rebuffed everything that was released to the public saying there's no way that this is physically possible and i no. believe I, I believe them i do yeah no it's it's very often that buildings just uh completely fall in on themselves as well you know it happens every day yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my theory yeah. is this okay they already tried to blow up the building about was it 10 years prior to that and they failed all right. Yeah. Now, if they were successful and one of those towers did fall over, the footprint it fell, fell into would probably kill 100,000 people. Mm. Maybe quietly, they actually did put explosives that will do a controlled fall of the building if it were to happen again. Now, if that is true, they should just tell us, because I would understand that, mm -hmm. if you think the building's going to you know, fall over and kill 100,000 people, or you blow it, make it fall into its own footprint, and you know you have to choose the lesser of two evils. I totally got that. I understand it. But uh, for them to not disclose that, then ship off all of the the steel wreckage, which could have been tested for explosives, but never was. That is that is just. I just can't wrap my head around that. I'm, I'm sorry. Yep. I will say this though. One uh one way to kind of hide that would be to uh, use the same steel from the building and then melt it down and then make a battleship out of it because then it would constantly be test test positive for explosives <laughs> <laughs> just saying it makes sense to me yeah yeah i got you, I got you. <laughs> all right on that What's note we'll uh well, well i want to go into this a little bit further just because all of right, what was okay. said here because personally i don't buy it but that's just my opinion again uh, he is not the first of the prisoners transferred from the secret CIA detention to Guantanamo in September 2006. He he is the first, excuse me, uh, since September 2006 to be released and the 
first third country resettlement by the Biden administration. Mr. Khan and his legal team are deeply grateful to Belize for offering him a chance to begin a new life. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Or to, you know, do something in those else in the future. But uh, what do I know? Yeah, I uh, he says here, I have been given a second chance in life and I intend to make the most of it, said Khan in a statement issued by his legal team. <clears throat> Excuse me. I deeply regret, <clears throat> damn it. Uh, I deeply regret the things that I did many years ago, and I have taken responsibility and tried to make up for them. I continue to ask for forgiveness uh, from God and those I have hurt. I am truly sorry. I think we'll wrap it up there again. Yeah, if you want to cool. look at the rest of that, you can pause that in the future. And, I would and like to that. see but, his answer delivered uh, by a thirty caliber bullet. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy his story no, uh, yeah. one bit, but that's just me. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. And uh, hey, how many viewers do we have on YouTube right now? You got. On YouTube, it says we have 655, according to the little note up there. All right. Now, I want to put this out real quick. All right. This Sunday on the supporter stream, I'm going to be working on a future video with the supporters. And it's basically a video on bullshit saturation. If you're Mm -hmm. interested, become a supporter, join the chat. And I want to hear everyone, all the supporter stories of... uh, that last straw that broke their back and they reached the bullshit saturation. It'll be absolutely hilarious. I hope to see you there on Sunday. <laughs> Hell yeah. Definitely yeah. Be <laughs> What's the next one? All right. Uh, Pumping right along here. Uh, this is, this is interesting. Um, let me put that back on screen here. Uh, this is from the gatewaypundit.com. This is well outside of my lane. Buttigieg, uh, when asked if Chinese were able to gather intelligence hovering over nuclear silos. So he just, he just doesn't know. I don't, I don't have a clue. They can't. Uh, tr- yeah. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg uh, appeared on CNN's State of the Union to discuss the China spy balloon scandal with host Jake Tapper. The ex- exchange was painful to watch. Pete Buttigieg had no idea what he's talking about. (laughs) Shocking. Uh, Jake Tapper asked Buttigieg to confirm if China gathered intelligence after it soared over the U.S. continental uh, United States uh, for a week straight. Yeah. Which should have never happened, by the way. Uh, It shouldn't have made it over the U.S. at all. That's absolutely correct. uh, And we'll we'll address that later on. But yeah. All right. All right. Moving on then. Uh, the China spy balloon soared over nuclear silos and military installations for a week straight. Isn't that nice? Joe Biden uh, knew the high altitude surveillance balloon entered the U.S. airspace uh, in Alaska last Saturday, yet he chose to sand down. Uh, Biden told reporters that he ordered the Pentagon to shoot down the spy balloon on Wednesday when it was spotted over Billings, Montana, several days after he already knew the balloon was over Alaska, but he was told, it, uh, let's wait for the safest place to do so. And and on that note, um, Montana, the uh, the government out there said uh, he's full of crap. There was plenty of opportunity out there to do it, and they still refused to do so. Um, well, I mean, this is, this is what I don't understand here. Okay. All right. Yeah, you got it. You got the president, and he's warned about stuff. Yeah. But I always operate on forgiveness. Like, I'm sure there has to be an Air Force general out there that could have sent up a fighter to shoot it down and then go, hey, I'm sorry, you know, yeah. it's my airspace. So it, I find it highly suspicious that they wait until it's over the ocean to get it. Right. Now, yeah. I understand there's rumors of a bomb or explosives or what have you. Mm-hmm. But let, let, let's be honest. It, it's a weather balloon, limited carrying capacity. Um, I hope they re cover the electronics because that will tell you exactly what its mission was they can just re-engineer it or backwards engineer what it was supposed to do to figure it out all right now i have to throw my two cents in here okay there's absolutely nothing that satellite can see that i mean there's nothing that that balloon could have seen that the chinese satellites could have uh not seen meaning there are billion-dollar satellites whizzing around this planet that quite literally um, can radar the surface of the Earth to figure out what's below it. Mm. All right. Maybe this balloon was set up to either A, be a distraction 
for stuff going on because, you know, the commander in chief is bought and paid for, or it was sent across the United States to embarrass, embarrass us on the world stage. Yeah. I mean, does uh, that sound, uh, does that sound uh, you know, plausible? I would agree. Yeah. Um, I would want to add uh, really quick, if you don't mind. Um, now, the satellites, the nearest uh, near-Earth orbit satellite is 130 times higher than this balloon was at orbit, according to what they were saying, 60,000 feet. Um, what, what I'm concerned about is they're able to get, if they're taking photos, they're able to get angles that satellites can't get. But more importantly, not just photo evidence, video evidence, or whatever they're looking for, um, and this is, again, just my theory. Uh, I'm not confirming anything or saying it's an absolute fact. But if you have something at 60,000 feet, it is less than optimal for a certain detonation, uh, electromagnetic pulse, magnetic pulse, excuse me. The um, but, yeah, but if you were to move that, let's say this thing was able to be controlled, and that's been uh, discovered now, too. They did have the ability to maneuver it. If they could move it up to 90,000 feet and do the same thing, this could have just been a test run to see what we would do. And uh, I think we passed by failing miserably in this instance because they could honestly have set off an EMP and boom, that's lights out for the whole country. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. Um, now, for those of you that don't know what an EMP is, it is an electromagnetic pulse. And typically uh, they are thrown off after a nuclear device is set off. So that that would that would be really bad, and I believe ninety percent of the electronics we use today is not shielded against EMP. So it would pretty much fry out everything, and it would take a good two or three years to replace it all. Right. Yep. If we could, if we could, uh, because you know, China, we we make most of our chips over there. That's a huge weakness that we have. Well, that's the thing. If they were to, um, and again, th these are all just hypothetical points, but if they were to set off a an above ground nuclear device to knock out our electrical grid, uh, we'd be in the Stone Age overnight. Uh, that includes things like gas pumps. That includes most of modern vehicles. It would fry the computers in those. Um, anything OBD2 and up from my understanding. So that's pretty much everything on the road these days. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, old muscle cars wouldn't be counted in that, things like that. But uh, more importantly, cell phones, um, hospitals, uh, for example, they have backup generators, but those only last so long. Uh -huh. You run the risk of a lot of people in a very, very, very bad situation if something like that were, were to occur. Plus, that puts um, this country in the position of being vulnerable uh, to needing foreign aid to reproduce our electro our electronic grid, uh, our electrical grid in general, because we don't we wouldn't have the capability internally now that we've fried everything to do so. We'd have to get transistors and uh, things like that from other countries and yep. hope that we're in their good graces enough to do so. That, that that is a major concern to me. And that is a valid concern, in my opinion. All right, so I don't know. And whole board. and given. Given all of this stuff going on, uh, Poppy said that there was a rumor of DEFCON 2 possibly happening. Oh, yeah. There, yeah, there yeah. was a rumor of, of, of the balloon causing the country to go to DEFCON 2. I I don't know if that's if that really happened or not, but, uh, I mean, that's the rumor. Yep. And just so that those don't know, these are the DEFCON levels. Yeah. Can you read them real quick? Of course, uh, five is... Exercise team fade out. Readiness is normal. Uh, lowest state of rep readiness. DEFCON 4 is double take. Above normal readiness is increased intelligence and strength and security. Mm -hmm. DEFCON 3 would be roundhouse exercise team. Air Force ready to mobilize in 15 minutes. Uh, force readiness increased above normal levels. DEFCON 2, fast pace. Armed forces, six hours or less to deploy and engage. Uh, next step is uh, dropping the bomb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not good. And uh, so DEFCON, DEFCON 1, one. Yeah. DEFCON 1, cocked pistol, maximum readiness, nuclear war is imminent or has begun. Mm. So it got to DEFCON 2. That's that's pretty high up there on the list. Yep. Yeah. As okay. the rumors go. Yeah. Right. 
who knows? Listen, yeah. um, they probably did go to DEF CON 2. It's not released to the general public because they don't want to panic anyone and make the president look more like an asshole, which he already is. Can and, they even uh, do that? <laughs> yeah. I, it's hard. It's hard to you know to make him actually look any worse. Right. But you know, hey, he's trying. You know, he's 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 given his he's given it all, his all to be the biggest asshole that's ever existed. That, yeah. that in the round room. Well, he sure does get an A plus for asshole. Yes. Mm. Yep. That's definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a raging asshole, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, what's the next one? But um, since we uh, know that this balloon may or may not have flown around the uh, certain areas, let's just say, uh, it's actually not too hard to uh, look stuff up mm -hmm. um, from New York Prepper. Uh, missile silo fields, maps, and coordinates. Just a quick glance at, because this is what I wanted to look at. This is the quick glance. You got Montana, North Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Now, let's see here. What's that? I believe, Rhino, you might have that other tab pulled I up do. there. Yep. Whenever you want me to okay. pop it up, I can. Uh, yep. So go, yep. Go, ahead. So go ahead and pull that up. At any pull given down. time. 30% of those silos are inactive because they're doing maintenance on the silo itself or the actual missile. So. Yep. I that just happens. And this is right there. That just happens to be the band that this balloon just happened to travel. Mm -hmm. you know, I see that. And yep. let's see, is there any others? I don't want to give out the coordinates or anything. Don't want to do any of that bad stuff. But it looks like that's just where it happens to focus of where things are at. Of course. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. I didn't know I had uh, that many around my area. That's kind of a scary thought. <laughs> want, me to, want me to throw that up for you there? <laughs> no, I think that one's good. But um, but But, yeah, around... You can kind of tell where it was around Montana. I mean, mm -hmm. Wyoming and all the Nebraska was more in the southwest corners. Right. But I'm sh I'm sure around in, you know, the areas of Kansas and all those other areas, I'm sure there's quite a quite a handful more. Mm -hmm. And I, I read a report that because of the altitude, they were able to deduce that it was controllable because normally weather balloons – are north of 80,000 feet. Yep. And this one came down to what, 60, below 60,000 feet, I believe. It's uh, kind of suspicious. So, mm -hmm. Some would say that's a little suspicious. And also, um, the hard hat divers have been deployed out there and they're actually walking on the bottom of the ocean trying to find uh, the meat and potatoes that sank. Yeah. What's left yep. of it, I'm sure, is uh, very little. Yeah, but because the uh, the Navy did release them recovering it, but it's just a bunch of bunch they're of dudes pull. Yeah. They're just pull, pulling the parachute up in, or the what's left of the balloon. They're pulling that up into a zodiac, mm -hmm. and that's about yep. all you're going to see. So, yep. yep. And uh, if they do find the pieces on the ground, I'm pretty sure we're not going to ever hear about it. And uh, nope. Yeah. Yeah. That's, see, and one of, one of my theories was since they shot it down over the water. Well, of course, water and electronics don't really get along very all that well. <laughs> no. But I'm sure there's I'm sure there's some kind of a containment for it because being that high up, you're dealing with storm clouds, moisture in the atmosphere. It's got you got to protect it somehow. But is it really oh. going to survive the fall into the water and be suspended in what do they say forty to forty seven feet of water? That's not yeah, that deep. Five feet. Yeah, no. that's, that's not that deep. And uh, who, who knows? Maybe they'll find some dead bodies out there from people who got whacked, thrown in safes, and then kicked <laughs> off the side of a boat. Right. Or, or just happened to, uh, unfortunately, know the Clintons. <laughs> mm. Allegedly. Allegedly. Don't don't make me pop that, but pop that up on the screen, man. I'll do it. <laughs> 
do it. All right, no, fine, no, I'll no, do no. it. <laughs> Oh my god. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> It's a you, good thing I was mostly looking at the article. Yeah, you rat bastard. What are you gonna hey, do? man. It's These guys right. give me crap. I got to give you crap, too. So. It's all good. It's all good. So uh, what's the next one? But uh, let's see. Uh, well, of course, here's an uh, aerospace expert on his take on how the balloons work and what they can see. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we know the balloon got shot down was through U.S. and Canada airspace. Uh, let's see. This was on the 2nd. And the next day, the Chinese officials acknowledged that the balloon was theirs, but denied it was intended for spying or meant to enter U.S. airspace. Mm. Uh, U.S. Anthony Blin uh, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said the balloon's incursion led him to cancel his pr trip to Beijing. Oh. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been rescheduled. Uh, that had been scheduled to meet with China foreign China's minister Queen uh, Qin Gang on February third and fifth and sixth. You don't have so, to read this name. You just say Chinese name yeah, inserted here. Yeah, Chinese. Yep. <laughs> so uh, he says, "What is a spy balloon? Spy balloon is literally a gas-filled balloon that is flying quite high in the sky. Oh well, no, shit! That's where they normally are, more or less." where we fly commercial airplanes. It is some sophisticated cameras and imaging technology on it. And it's pointing all of those instruments down at the ground, collects information through photography and other imaging, wherever it goes down on the ground below it. So going back to what Rhino said, maybe it was to get different angles of right. different things. Yeah. Um, the reason to uh, use balloons instead of uh, st satellites like a, we just said um, satellites preferred method of spying from overhead satellites above today, one or two types of orbit, uh, low earth orbit. Ugh, those satellites are relatively close to the ground, but they're still several hundred miles above us for imaging and taking photographs. The closer you are to something, the clearer you can see it. So that makes sense. This applies to spying as well. Uh, the disadvantage of, to the low earth aber or low earth orbit satellites have is that they are continually moving around the earth it takes them 90 90 minutes to do one orbit around the earth mm -hmm. that turns out to be pretty fast in terms of taking clear photographs of what's going on below second type is a geosynchronous orbit that's much farther away it has a disadvantage as it's hard to see things clearly when you're very very far away well, no shit Sherlock uh let's see these are the types of surveillance spy balloons are capable of. Uh, he goes on to say, I don't know what's on this particular spy balloon, but it's likely to be different kinds of cameras collecting different types of information. These days, imaging is conducting across different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Humans see in certain ranges of the spectrum, the visible and the visible spectrum. And if so, if you have a camera, you could take a photograph of your dog, visible, blah. It's starting start to sound like me on waffling. Mm -hmm. They take regular photos, although they have very good zoom capabilities to be able to magnify what they're seeing quite a lot. But you can also gather different kinds of information in other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Another fairly well known is infrared. If it's nighttime, camera operating is the visible part of the spectrum is not going to show you anything. It's going to be dark and infrared camera can pick up things from heat in the dark. Mm. Yeah. Well, and Jimmy, I want to add something to this as well, because uh, I mentioned the balloon could set off an EMP. What I'm suggesting isn't just that one balloon would be sent over. The issue is if they allowed one balloon over, what if they sent a couple hundred over? You know, who's to say they couldn't do that? And we've just proven we'll wait a week before we decide on it. That's where the my concern comes in. You're right, absolutely yep. correct. The, the, listen, the hesitation in war is deadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and yeah, we have you, an individual at the top who has got a compromised brain pan, number one. Number two, uh, how he got there is highly questionable. Yeah. And the bullshit with his son, I mean, come on. He yeah. is in the pockets of a foreign power, and I can't believe we're not even doing anything about it. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Really bad. But uh, this one, actually, I kind of briefed over that one. Uh, how do these balloons m navigate? Most of the balloons literally go anywhere the wind blows. So that brings up question one. I would like to see the uh, jet stream maps of that entire hole of, of last week. That would be interesting to see if mm -hmm. the map of the balloon and the, the jet streams line up. Um, going on, uh, there could be a little bit of navigation but there are certainly not people aboard them. They are at the mercy of whatever the weather is. They sometimes have guiding apparatus on them that changes a balloon's altitude to catch winds going in particular directions. Again, I would like to see the jet stream maps of last week just to see if things line up. Okay. Uh, according to according to U.S. According to reports, U.S. officials said the Chinese surveillance balloon had propellers to help steer it. This is confirmed. It means its operator would have much more control over the path of the balloon. If I recall, I read some reports where it actually uh, the balloon paused in a few locations, mm. meaning it stopped moving or or slowed down uh, a lot. Yep. Yeah, that means and, it's under somebody's control, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, yeah. bottom line is they did a great job embarrassing this country. Yes, uh, they did. Yeah, yes, they did. There's no doubt that, you know, that was probably part of their uh, mission objectives, meaning mm -hmm. multiple objectives. No. And so what? We, we shot the balloon down on the far end of the country after it had four and a half days to do whatever the hell it wanted. Right. That is totally unacceptable. Yeah. Very Am much. I wrong? No, not at all. Um, it, like I said, it, in the beginning, it should have never made it over the country at all it, it shouldn't this shouldn't be a conversation but uh mm -hmm. i'm not the uh, brilliant minds running this administration right now so no no i mean you talk about all the diversity hires that are up there yeah oh geez yeah. all the c minus minds that are uh trying to make a plus decisions which they can't yeah i said See, i think I, I think their strategy is to collect all of the uh lower IQ people try to co combine them all together, and then you get your A plus. Yeah, that could be it. But you, it you, pack, you can you can only pack so many turds into a septic tank before it starts overflowing. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> what, what's the next one there, Red Pill? Okay, this is uh, this is some information regarding uh, past events, allegedly. Uh, this happened before. This is coming from the gatewaypundit.com. China floated a balloon over Hawaii last year. Unmanned balloons spotted over Hawaii in 2022. Uh, the Chinese surveillance balloon that floated across the United States this week may not be the first unmanned Chinese surveillance balloon that has infiltrated U.S. airspace back in 2022. Hawaii News Now, which is a major news station in the state of Hawaii, reported a strange white balloon uh, was spotted by residents on the island of Kauai uh, back in February of 2022, the balloon, which was described at, by residents as a white orb, even garnered the attention of the U.S. military. Hawaii's uh, adjutant general uh, reported the U.S. military uh, sent out an aircraft and confirmed the white orb residents were seeing was actually a white unmanned balloon that had no identifiable markings. Residents of Kauai uh, claim they saw jet shoot down the balloon and heard loud booms, too. So there you go. Um, yeah. I didn't hear about that uh, until just recently, obviously, but yeah. uh, apparently it's happened before. But, I mean, I know we've had issues with weather, weather balloons from other countries. Uh, it happens all the time uh, for the most part. Uh, I don't know if they go over the continental United States, but mm -hmm. there are some occasions where they've seen them over the Aleutian Islands, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, in the Pacific. I mean, it, it happens. I got it. You know, we're uh, evil, hairless monkeys with a very hyper sense of uh, curiosity, and we do stupid shit. Yeah. 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 Now, um, yeah. 
Well, you know, and they're they're talking about this is something else, and I want to get into these articles. It's kind of a back and a forth on my last few articles here, but uh, part of it is that they said, "Oh, this happened under Trump," but then magically, and we'll get into the articles, but uh, then magically, it wasn't reported to Trump. So, yeah, which that is, seems like a bit of a problem. Yes, that's a big problem. All right, now for those of you out there, all right, listen. The swamp and the deep state did not want to see Trump get elected. So they had the mm-hmm. alphabet agencies spying on him while he was running his campaign, lied to a judge to get FISA warrants. And then they cooked up, once he got elected, they cooked up all that crazy stuff. And then we had what, 41 former Intel, you know, big wig sign off saying that, uh, you know, the, hunter laptop was you know what russian disinformation listen there's like some some kind of coup going on yep or went on Mm -hmm. between trump and the alphabet agencies that includes intel and law enforcement to be honest with you and we can we can rent rope in uh big tech with those as well too yeah well it's twitter employees and and facebook whole Twitter file dumps proves Mm -hmm. yeah that we had our Mm -hmm. government you know, working with big tech to basically circumvent everyone's constitutional rights. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is reprehensible right there. Yeah. It just, it blows my mind all the crap that uh, all of these people have gotten away with and, and nothing has been done. Um, It just, I don't even know what to say. It just, it's, it's astonishing uh, that this is is crap still going on. Yeah. You know, know. but anyway, in my opinion, it's going to devolve to a point where people are going to be forced to take action, and uh, that's going to be an ugly day. I hope I hope we're able to pull back from that, and if it does get ugly, my ass is staying out of the way. I already got a place picked out to lay low, because <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be nuts, man, and I'm yeah. too old for any of that crazy stuff, so no thank you. We'll get into this article here really quick. Yeah, just to uh, go over this. It says, yes, Chinese spy balloons flow over the U.S. when President Trump was in office, too. This is from Mm -hmm. Forbes.com. I'll just go over it briefly here. Talking heads on cable TV are up in arms. Uh Uh-oh, something happened here. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we're good now. All right, so talking heads on cable TV are up in arms about the Chinese spy balloon that was floating across the continental U.S. before it was shot down on Saturday afternoon. Conservative commenters have insisted that President Joe Biden should have ordered the balloon to be shot down earlier and that a foreign balloon flying over U.S. territory uh, never would have happened under President Donald Trump. But it did happen under Trump, according to several news reports. The Chinese government claims the balloon, which was first spotted by civilians on Wednesday over Billings, Montana, was actually just a weather balloon that had blown off course, I'm sure. But the Pentagon says it's definitely a surveillance balloon and the ability to maneuver the aircraft. Uh, I can nearly guarantee you that the balloon would not still be flying if it were still there, like Pompeo, former Secretary of State under Trump, told Sean Hannity on Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I believe that's uh, fairly accurate. Yeah. So, I mean, which is it? Uh, now, listen, has have you guys noticed that when it, we criticize Biden, the left always says, well, that happened under Trump as well. Does it sound like there's a huge gaslighting operation going on? That, yep. I mean, that, that's that's the feeling I'm getting from all this craziness. Yep. Like I always said, it's a shame we can't harness the energy of the gaslighting because then we could power the planet for the next 2,000 years. That would be nice. Yeah. But it is what it is. What are you going to do? Yep. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But then you got the the three, what was it, the three top Trump officials come back and say, oh, no, that never happened. Yeah, or I know. at least or they said, oh, yeah, it was it was known. It just wasn't told to him and nothing was done about it. So who knows? Who knows who's telling the truth? So that's why I, did, I don't believe him. Well, my all. thing is this. Yeah. If, you know, Trump is I don't know if he's got on the record saying that never happened, but he had three people in his cabinet who were in the inner circle that were in the know saying it, it didn't happen. 
So mm -hmm. if it did take place and it wasn't that information wasn't conveyed to Trump, that is a big no ah ah. And people need mm -hmm. to lose their jobs. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And that that actually gets on to the next article here. Um there's just so much back and forth right now, but uh, this is from the gatewaypundit.com. It's not true. I can refute it. Former DNI Ratcliffe is latest official to confirm no sp spy balloons over continental U.S. during Trump years. Media lied. All right, so we'll go on and look over this one really quick. Former DNI, DNI John Ratcliffe joined Maria Baratoromo. Uh, this morning on Sunday morn morning futures, John Ratcliffe was director of national intelligence under president Trump on Sunday, uh, excuse me, on Saturday, the Biden regime admitted the spy balloon was first spotted a week earlier in Alaska, which we kind of already went over anyway, Tuesday, the balloon entered Idaho and crossed the U S uh, for the next four days. The China spy balloon was then shot down. So we know that. Uh, but what they're saying uh, is that it was, this has happened before the fake news is hopping is hoping to convince Americans that these China spy balloons across the U S happen across the U S all the time. In fact, fake news insisted that this happened during the Trump years on Sunday morning, a Fox news reporter pushed back on these claims. She spoke with Michael Bolton, uh, Rick Grinnell, former defense secretary, Mark Esper, and others who said they've never heard of this happening. And if they did, they were not notified, which is just as bad. Uh, like you were saying, pop, uh, former Trump advisor John Bolton, former DNI Rick Grinnell, former Defense Secretary Mark Esper, uh, former Secretary of State and CIA Director Mike Pompeo and others told Fox News that this is a lie. This never happened during the Trump years. And if it did happen, the top officials in the Trump administration were not notified. John Rat Ratcliffe in his latest uh, to confirm that uh, this latest media report is yet another deep state lie to protect Democrats in a feckless, senile joe biden so there you go damn mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure if there were balloons overhead we would have heard about them and then the media would have been oh those russian russian air space balloons and all this and trump's letting them do this and that i'm sure we would have heard any something from yeah the they would have gone nuts just they like would, going nuts just yeah. like with it anything that i mean i mean hell trump crop dusts a three-year-old because he can't hold a fart in and they got to run <laughs> that for a week story mm. for two yes. years, at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the Trump derangement syndrome that's going on out there is just insane. Uh, now, it's... listen, I am not a huge Trump fan. The reason I was behind Trump is basically he was not more of the same. We, we see exactly what the Republicans or the rhinos are doing, which is basically nothing. We have the left converting this country into communist socialist hellhole, and, and the Republicans are, are literally doing nothing about it. It, it, yeah. it is, it is mind-boggling that it's come down to this. Yeah. Well, and let me point this out. Um, as you know, if Trump sneezed, the news would report about it and call him a racist for it. So... Every time he did anything in this country, he was to blame. So this begs the question, if there were balloons from China um, over the United States during Trump's administration, don't you think the news would have been covering it just until today, probably yep. still tomorrow, uh, yep. saying that Trump was a total failure, that he let these balloons come over and didn't do anything, didn't act. We would have heard about it every day. That's Getting right. back to this article to quote uh, John Ratcliffe here. I uh, just want to pop this in here really quick. Uh, it's not true, and I can refute it. Former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper refuted it yesterday. Former Secretary of State CIA Director Mike Pompeo has refuted it. But Maria, the American people can refute it for themselves. Do you remember during the Trump administration when photographers on the ground and commercial airline pilots were talking about spy balloons over the United States? The people could look up and see it with the naked eye. And... A media that hated Donald Trump wasn't reporting. I don't remember that either because it didn't happen. That's right. It mm. did not happen. And I'm throwing this in here really quick. Yeah! Fitting. Very fitting. Oh, very fitting. Yeah. It, listen, this is so ridiculous. And it's blatantly a national gaslighting attempt. Mm -hmm. This is blatant. Yep. You know, I... I, I just don't have uh, any 
I don't have any words for how insane this has become. I mean, this is our goddamn country. We're losing control of it. Idiots are, are have worked their way up to the top, mainly because they infest these super cities that are overwhelmingly blue, and they just outvote the surrounding suburbs and, and counties. I mean, this needs this needs to get fixed. And I think the best way to do it is to give every county or every state an electoral college per county. You know, so if you have 100 counties in the state and 80 of them win for one candidate, candidate, guess what? There you go. Because these major hubs of lunacy that have lost touch with reality have way too much power. And it's becoming a problem, in my opinion. Big time. Yeah. On yep. that note, uh, Pop, we are at the one hour mark. Um, I don't know if you wanted to do uh, the second half new tech exclusive or whether you want to stay on YouTube. Uh, that is, oh, your we concern. could stay on everything. We're, we're not. We're not really okay. not talking about anything no. crazy. Okay. But uh, speaking of YouTube, I would think now would be a good time to read some super chats here. Yeah. Well, why don't you we know, do this? See. Put up the piss break. I'm you gotta go hit the head for about uh, two minutes, and then we'll we'll hit some super chats. All Let's right, see. all right, hit it. Cool. We made yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Yeah. All righty. We'll go on to some YouTube super chats here. We have Armored Nerd Productions with $2 super chat. No comment. Thank you, good sir. We have <clears throat> I sell a litter. <laughs> I sell cat litter. I sell cat Sorry, litter. I can't read. <laughs> uh, $20 donation. Uh, why Thank not you. cover Why not cover Joe, Joe Mencia or Biden's Soto tonight. I hope he has a stroke and I so I can see it on live TV. <laughs> All right. I'm, uh, uh, one of the main reasons I'm not covering uh, the State of the Union is I would become so pissed off I would not be able to speak because everything that's going to come out of his mouth is going to be deceit and lies. Yep. Well, I will say this. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is bringing a, uh, a big old white balloon with her and I... Uh, <laughs> I commented on a post that someone's going to come up and pop the balloon and he's going to poop his pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Listen, God. I have no idea how we got so many weak ass leaders up at the top. It is shameful. That's... It really is. I have no idea why we don't have more veterans running for public office because yep. we need them desperately. And I'm not talking like the veterans who pushed paper. I'm talking dudes that threw lead at people. 
I mean, listen, the standing on line with your buddies or your fellow soldiers and moving forward, expecting enemy contact is terrifying. I've done it quite a few times. And I'll tell you this, when you come back from that, you, you bring something back with you. You can call it bravery, moxie, insanity, whatever. But those people usually, when they come back, are head and shoulders above everyone else who's been sitting here in the country, eating McDonald's, Burger King, and drinking Cokes. They have no idea what really goes on at the uh, last 300 meters of our foreign policy. All right. Nope. That's my rant. <laughs> Uh, Armor Nerd Productions, five dollars super chat. You've helped me a lot, man. Thanks and cheers. Here's to and you, listen, good sir. Pay it forward and share these videos and this channel. Yep. Let's see. We got Daniel Van Winkle with a fifty dollar donation. So that deserves one of these. Where's that? We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, good sir. He says, hey, Pop, I really would like to know your input on this. I got kicked out of the army for not taking the poke and smoke. Uh -huh. but, I am, but I'm as I I'm I was a foster child with zero support and really nothing else I can do. So I want to go back in if they let me. Your thoughts. OK, if if that's the only thing you have, by all means, do that. Now, they went back and they recalled a bunch of people that weren't quite yet. ETS out of the military. Uh, what you're probably going to have to do is uh, contact your senator and see if you can get your uh, separation code upgraded. And because I'm pretty sure they probably put a code in there that's going to, you know, goat screw you so you can't get back in. You're going to have to fix that. Once that, re once that code is fixed, you just re enlist. You just go to the recruiter, start all over, do your thing. You know, right on. That's pretty much how it is. Now, if they gave you a dishonorable, which I don't think they've done that to anyone who refused the poke, because that requires, you know, a court martial. There's a lot of publicity. I'm assuming that these people got de general discharges. Uh, so, I mean, those are easy. Uh, I wouldn't say easy to fix. They're easier to get upgraded to an honorable. And if there's a, a realistic code in there that's uh, screwing you, you're going to have to go through those steps. Now, if you have no support system and you're out there flapping, I totally understand uh, what you're going through here. Now, my professional opinion is this. If you get to go back in, go in the Navy, learn a trade. So if this happens again, you can fall back on something. HVAC, electrician, carpenter, welder. I mean, the Navy has all of those blue-collar jobs, and they will teach you how to do it. And when you get out of the service, you can quite literally walk into a union hall, show them your discharge papers, and you go to the top of the line to get into the union. Yeah. There, there you, you go. go. Let's see, uh, not not in a band account with dollar ninety nine. He asks, "How many doom balloons have entered the United States of America?" Uh, Probably. well, I know during World War II they had what a half a dozen of them land, you know, inside the continental United States. Uh, there are weather balloon sightings here and there, but most right. of the time they don't have the complicated arrays on them. It's the balloon and maybe a. Uh, small amount of equipment that they recover once the balloon comes down but i really don't have the information to answer that but it would seem because we have no control over the actual jet stream it would be easy to do and i'm surprised more countries aren't doing it more we're mm -hmm. probably going to see more now that they uh were able to get uh, the chinese were able to get one across our entire goddamn country <laughs> right doing yeah. anything about it mm-hmm Yep, we'll sit on our hands for a week. No, no. I <laughs> we sat on our hands with our thumbs up our asses for a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I snows with $10. He says, why did the CCP send a balloon when they have satellites? 
I think they did it just to test us to see our reaction would be their encroachment. Pop your thoughts. I, sure I definitely we're... think it has something to do with uh, either humiliation or a test. All right. Because, listen, the spy satellites that we have can literally read a packet of cigarettes uh, on the the warning label on a package of cigarettes from orbit. Yeah. And they have different equipment that can lay LIDAR and who knows what else they have. So, um, I don't know. My, my gut is telling me that, uh, they were testing us in my opinion. Yeah, it sounds, that'd be the reasonable way answer. Uh, let's see. Fan. I am with $5. Redonculus 12 Gmail milestone celebration. Uh, let's see what he's got here. G'day, gents. Celebrate with me because I bought my first house on the weekend. All right. An, an oh, immaculate yeah. two-bed, two-bedroom ba- townhouse. Land is 175, 197 square yards. House size is 102 square yards. I'm a bachelor, 41-year-old roofer that works hard and saved up for it for two and a half years. Something I've always wanted to work for. Wanted and work for. It feels like a big milestone for me or or anyone really, considering the housing economy here in Australia. Just wanted to share my. Here's to you, wild you man. Just That's definitely a winning. The dingoes away, and the funnel wet <laughs> spiders. Those things suck. <laughs> and them drum buyers. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, we got Mike with two dollars. Ninety percent of the population will die after a year. So All right. After the. Hang on. Let's talk about this. I've read those reports that 90% of the population is going to be gone in one to three years. <coughs> All right. 90% of the population is roughly 5.8 billion people. All right. Now, are there increased deaths that we can't explain? Yes. Do I think they're going at a pace that's going to add up to 5.8 billion people in three years? No. Now, with that being said, I've heard all kinds of craziness going on with the poke and smoke uh, and other things that are in that cocktail of craziness. So uh, something nefarious did take place. I do not know if it's that lethal to you know kill 90 percent of the population in one to three years because we'd really be seeing it by now the numbers would be way worse in my opinion Absolutely. yep yeah clip, oh, clip let 3188 me, let me grab this and i'm going to grab this one really quick before it disappears off my my screen here uh we got a ten dollar uh chat over on rumble from bass beast 10 chat is all disabled on all live feed for the potato in chief. Are you really shocked? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> ah. yeah. yeah. And we should actually look at that and see how many downvote it has. It, do you have the uh, special thing on your browser? I do. Uh, do not. Jimmy, do you? I do not either. Uh, okay. I bet you it's ratioed quite terribly. Though. Yeah. Oh, Probably I bet have, you it is. I have to look upstairs because uh, I have it installed in the uh, chat the chat computer upstairs <laughs> there we go we might have to do that uh, let's see cliff 3188 with 499 it says where is the information exchange from canada the balloon had yeah. to go through their country before it got into montana what was canada's mm-hmm. reaction that's absolutely oh. correct I, I was just going to ask that what did uh you know castro's bastard son did, say or do about it i no. haven't heard a peep i haven't heard a peep out of that uh nope piece of crap me nope. either might have to uh, see if we can get in touch with uh, Skid and see if he's heard anything about that. Yeah, Unchained Skid. We he's, should ask him. He, he's our local Canadian. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, Simple Dan Forever with $5. It says, uh, at that height, they could have uh, could have blacked out or contaminated the bread basket. That would have hit us where it hurts. Yeah, they, they could have done something like that. Yeah, that would have been with bad. A big, with a big set of uh, brass knuckles, too. Yeah, if, if they were successful in doing that, then, yeah, you would see a huge population decline because of the famine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like we are we already have food shortages or anything like that. Yep. <laughs> right. Um, we have Kala Barava 
Bairava. Apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, $20 Australian. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> nice. right, we will. Thank you very much All for right, that man. donation. Right. Uh, Alex Rawls with $1.99 says, just dropping in to say hi to Pop and everybody. You're welcome, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, Dung is fun with $5. Under Trump, media says there was three of them when he was in office. Why wasn't it, he notified? Oh, yeah. Major <laughs> Mad Dog didn't tell him. Yeah. It was treason. Yes. Um, we keep throwing that word treason around. C- can you look it up and actually read the definition of, of treason and sedition? I, I would like to know because uh, they seem to be interchangeable. Uh, I don't know. Is treason something that happens with a other country that you actually declared war with? I don't know. From Wikipedia. There you go. Treason treason is the crime of attacking a state authority to which one owes allegiance. This typically includes acts such as participating in a war against one's native country, attempting to overthrow its government, spying on in, on its military, its diplomats, or its secret services for a hostile foreign power or attempting to kill its head of state. A person who and if commits you, treason is also known in law as a traitor. If you look yeah. at it under the Constitution, <clears throat> Article 3, Section 3, Clause 1, treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. No person shall be convicted of treason unless the... Uh, on the testimony of two witnesses to the same over act or confession in open court. So there you go to add to that. Yep. Okay, cool. And to uh, second that uh, sedition, uh, sedition is overt conduct such as speech and organization that tends towards rebellion against the established order. Okay. So one, you're talking about it and two, you're doing it. Okay. That gotcha. would be it. Totally that got would it. Be it. All right. Oh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Jack Whittaker, uh with $10 uh, says, my dad was blue pilled as could be and thought I was wrong for my beliefs. It took my mom my stepmom's mom assaulting him and getting him, getting acquitted Ooh. for him to see that I was right. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. that'll do it. That'll, that'll do, do it. it. I mean, that's wow. what, that's what red pilled me. Getting, uh, you know, the long stroking on my brown eye right there in divorce court. And nobody, yeah. and it was like, you know, business as usual. Get the hell out yeah. of here. The wow. gold suppository. <laughs> uh, it's bad, bad news bears, bad news bears. Uh, let's see what to do. We have a request here from MGTOW Forever. AOC Chase and Pop. I love it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dung is fun with five dollars. Uh, censorship censorship happen online happens. Why wouldn't that apply to old scripture or old books? Old scripture and books are censored as well. Uh mm. yeah. I, I would say that's probably correct. I mean, the biggest censor in history is the Catholic Church. I mean, you, you yeah. wouldn't believe the amount of shit they have in the catacombs below the Vatican that has never been released to the public, that they didn't want re- released to the public. I mean, it's it's literally acres and acres of information that is locked up down there, and I would love to see that stuff get scanned in digitally and released to the public. That would be absolutely, awful. absolutely. Uh, let's see tucker time with five dollars thank you good sir no comment on that one dung is fun again with two dollars people online and old books have to speak in code and actually uh i saw this in the chat so i wanted to bring it up as well <clears throat> this is uh title 18 u.s code on treason so to be more specific this is cornell law school whoever owing allegiance to the united states levies war against them them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid comfort within the United States. So that's basically the same thing I read before, but that is title 18 specifically. Uh, so there you go. 
uh, is guilty of treason and shall suffer death or be imprisoned not less than five years and fined under this title, but not less than $10,000 and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. So uh, if you didn't know, there you know. Uh, yeah. So title 18. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, Thumper, the sweaty fat guy with $2, he says, no damn way am I taking the blue weenie again. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cliff thirty one eighty eight with four ninety nine says, "Pop, you've always talked about what you what you'd do if you were running the show. Video idea: <laughs> President Pop's State of the Union include a podium <laughs> and a business jacket. There you go. That would be a good one. That'd be a good comedy yeah. skit. Yeah. Writing it down. Writing it down." That's good stuff right there. Definitely going to have to have that one. Someday. Listen, I get all kinds of ideas from comments and talking to dudes out there. It's hilarious. Oh, and uh, last week, I got a contact on Facebook from an individual who's friends with another individual who has disappeared off the radar due to depression. Mm. And he's like, pop, contact him, send him some videos, and maybe we can pull him back. So that's exactly what I did for him. I'm waiting to see if it actually worked. If it does, I would like to raise the you know counter to you know five ten. Yeah. I think that'd five, be cool. Five ten and a shot for that. There's nothing yeah. out there worthy of you killing yourself over other than a terminal illness that can't be cured and the ending is gonna be absolutely tragic for you. I understand that. Or you're super old and you're just done. I understand yep. that as well. But if you're 21 years old and Mary Jane Rottencrotch decided to blow <laughs> your best friend and humiliate you in front of God and everyone, the answer is not putting a gun in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's it's not even close. No. Just saying. <clears throat> and I think we've all been there at one point or another where, you know, you've been through that situation Look, man, I'll tell you, coming out on the other end of it, it, it it seems bad at the moment, and I get that, but things get better. I mean, everybody in this panel has been through that, and here we are, and as far as I'm concerned, we're all having a pretty good day here, so just keep that in mind. It does get better, man. Yeah, pretty decent. Let's uh, see. Uh, Harrison Blackwood with $5. He says, uh, or he asks, anyone remember our spy plane that landed itself in Iran? I do Ooh. not. I do not. I might have to look into that one. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, Mike Ogleby uh, with $20. 90% uh, after EMP, Pop. Oh, 90% after EMP? Mm. Uh, that might be a little high. All right. Now, granted, yes, we, we like electricity and stuff like that, but... Uh, you know, if they took that all away, I'm sure a lot of people would be able to, to, to deal with it for a little while at least. So I, I would say maybe 30% of our population would get whacked. All of the old and infirm would probably not make it. Yep. Well, what do they say if the uh, the electrical grid goes down or whichever, which one of them big old problems? They said that it would take 72 hours for goes, everything to stop. By the way, gentlemen, uh, everybody in the chat here wanted to clarify from the hamster himself to Billy Von Baum and a few people in between. Uh, that was a drone uh, that landed there, uh, just to clarify. Okay, it was a drone. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now that now that now that they say that, okay, I'm vaguely remember hearing something like that. Something about a spy plane or a drone landing in Iran. Mm. Something like that. Uh MGTOW Forever with two dollars. He says, You're awesome, Pop. Gives Thank a winning you. thumbs up. Uh, Andrew Tremer, or Tremere, Canadian. We heard nothing until it passed over U.S. mainland. Wow. <laughs> that figures. That figures. Wow. Now, That's... listen. Now, listen. I like the Canadians, but I'm going to be honest. You mother effers have a bunch of defense leeches. Like, the reason you are the way you are is because you haven't had to spend for defense, you know, any money on defense because you're literally the hat of America. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, yeah. they have all these crazy opinions about us, 
and they, and they've formulated them because they don't have to actually send anyone to do anything. And they buy all of our old equipment. It it it's insane. Now, how about you know you know Canada uh, pony up thirty five percent of their GDP for their military? Oh no, you can't do that. Ah, uh, that's right. You can't even come up with three percent for NATO. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. And to clarify once again on the drone, uh, just to give you guys information that are watching that want to know about it, it was December 9th, two thousand eleven. So there you go. All right. Now, was that drone hijacked and then taken in, or that I don't know the details. I'm just uh, slowly piecing that together because of the chat. <laughs> yep, it's probably what happened. See, you know, we're talking about all this craziness. You're making me drink. God damn you guys! <laughs> I'm sitting there telling I'm giving up booze. I'm cutting back, and I'm getting so upset. I'm drinking. You see what you're doing to me? You see what you do? You sons of bitches! <laughs> oh, I'll drink with you. Here you go. <laughs> at least you're not drinking alone <laughs> yep uh let's see we got mike oglesby again with twenty dollars uh three months no clean water 90 percent dead ah that could be a problem yeah that could be now i myself good. you know i i know how to deal with that those austere environments so i'd be okay though i'm a little older it would be more difficult to move around but you know me and those with me would be okay and uh, if you haven't joined Pops Preppers, go to the link tree, send me uh, your information. I'll put you on the list. I send out a newsletter every two to three months uh, to everyone on the list in regards to, you know, what I know, what's going on. So there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, got Lafay Moore with $20. The Deagle Report, it's going to be a perfect con conflagration of things. War, the conflagration of the Koof Vax, the feminine, and maybe a little civil war thrown on mm. the floor for flo thrown on for flavor. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, we're we're definitely building towards a perfect storm here. Uh, yep. I don't know, and again, I, I tell you, this is just my opinion because everybody watching has their own as well. Um, but again, in my opinion. We are already circling the toilet bowl's drain. We're, I don't think we're coming back from it. No, no. I, I think we went past the point of no return in, uh, this, in 2022 with what we saw in the midterms. Yeah. In my opinion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And my ass is telling me 2024 is going to be, uh, yeah, somewhere around there it's going to kick off. Maybe a couple of years well, after yep. we'll see. That lines oh, up to it, something I was watching today regarding um, somebody. I don't know. I don't know enough to tell you, but somebody had uh, said in one of the videos, political news that I watched today, that there was a predictor that in 2025 there would be a war with China. So just, just saying, putting that out. I there. believe that. I believe that was a high-ranking uh, Air Force dude, and he said it was 2024. 2024. Because okay. I remember, I'm pretty sure if we're thinking about the same video, I saw that. Yeah, we'll see. But now China is getting their ass kicked yeah. right now. They literally are. Uh, yeah, let's see. Their real estate is imploding. Uh, there's 400 million people unaccounted for. 10 percent of the CCP leadership is now dead. Wow. Uh, they're, they're 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 having flooding. Their dams are failing. They have massive food insecurity. So, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. You, you let them do what they got to do. We'll see how it pans out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got Tucker time here. Yep. Uh, he says, Hey pop been watching or for $10. He says, Hey pop been watching for some older live from the layer videos. Drinking with you boys. Cheers. I live in Southwest Michigan. I'm 24 and would love to help spread the message to young men like myself and do oh, yeah. it. bro. Share now, the videos, man. Share the videos. I want to ask the you know the fans out there. I've been putting out videos on this board that are very similar to when I first started <laughs> on the dry erase boards in a basement somewhere. And the last one I did, I think it was uh, the dollar value of having a man around, because these these young men today they think they're valueless. There's nothing they could do. They're not being told the right messages in school. They become young adults, and they're literally, by the age of 19, circling <clears> the <throat> brain. 
They need to know their value. So I actually put that together. Let me know in the comments if you like that kind of thing. And I should continue because, to be quite honest, I love doing it. Hell yeah. You know. Pop, by the by the way, uh, I just noticed it. I don't know if you guys uh, watching the show have noticed it, but uh, you have a nice little placard there. Live saved from self-deletion 509, 509 behind you. That is pretty cool. I haven't seen that up on the wall before. Yeah. 509 individuals are still sucking air because I tell bad jokes and talk shit and speak the truth. <laughs> there you Gotta go. I love that. Let's see. Uh, getting down to the last few here. Uh, big chat, the mad lab. True. Do true. Do toilet. The balloon passed because he is busy passing the Canadian internet censorship bill. No joke. Mm. Now give me a box wine of cat land. <laughs> you want to do the long one or the short one, Jimmy? Do the short one. Uh, we'll, we'll give him the short. <laughs> Stop, Stop playing yet. Don't touch me there. This is my no no square. a dollar for every time i use that photo at the end there <laughs> oh my god oh man listen, never gets old <laughs> these women out there don't realize what's in store for them no it's a bunch of just loneliness and you know basically watching the clock waiting to die you can look them right in the eye and explain this to them and they still find a way to weasel their way out of it like no nah, that doesn't apply to me okay yeah well we'll see we'll see Listen, I'll be I waiting talked at the about finish line to watch book, the warrior's way and soldier soul. Mm -hmm. People out there think they're special and the rules of the universe don't apply to them, but in short order, they find out, no, they're not. And yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it looks like a uh, fan. I am back to back here with the first, uh, with $10 Australian. He's got eight clips for us. So we'll have to open those up here. Let's see, I think I got the first batch opened up here. Let's see, refreshing. Those aren't coming up yet, but all right. Yep, let me do now, this. If way. there's any nudity or any like patented music, kill it. Oh, no, these. Yeah, right. screen oh. it first. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything come on D Live yet. And Rumble, I only had the one so far. So I am monitoring. I just haven't seen anything yet. So All right. if I missed All you, right. I do apologize, but I am keeping my eye on it to the best of my cool. ability here. Cool. All right. I think we got ourselves a, uh, a contestant for a fucked up but funny. Here we go. Oh, boy. Let's see. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Good messed times. up. That's messed up, man. <laughs> Threw a pie in his face. Yeah, yeah. He even gave him gave him the old stick through the chair to fuck and a pie to the face. Oh, Good times. <laughs> oh, so he put the shit. chair in there so he couldn't get out of the chair. <laughs> yeah, and he hit him with a pie. That's priceless. <laughs> it's uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, here we go. This oh it's a end. rhino. <laughs> oh, here. We'll refresh that one real fast. Here, full screen it there. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> the rhino. Get out of here. I'll kill you. Poor dog. <laughs> Poor dog. <laughs> oh, man. Oh no! Oh no! Uh -oh. Uh, let's just say that. Let's just say this guy uh, had the uh, good idea. Fairy, give pay him a visit here. Hmm. Refresh. Ten more seconds. The hell. What do you do? I don't. I don't know. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Did he put a cup it's, on his lips or something? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, he like put, it, the put it. Yep. I used to do that so, when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, like I said, the good idea fairy paid him a visit. <laughs> oh. oh, here we go. This one's going to be a good one. Hmm. Got ourselves a... Uh, Would blank for... A married man would use to fill in the blank. I would blank for s- James. Hey. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> at the top. <laughs> About married men. Completely true. So completely true. <laughs> wow. The women have no clue. I would lie for s- yes. Oh, that's going to be on the that's list for sure. That's a guy answer. You got it. You don't know how deep this runs with us. <laughs> you would lie. Yes, lie. There it is. <laughs> I've never done this, but beg. Yes. Yes. question they don't even know <laughs> two strikes no chance you can blow this game i'm gonna kick it up a notch and say kill I would, I would. wow all right yes <laughs> well we went from six to ten wow all right that should be number two yeah <laughs> it is number two holy shit <laughs> tell me wow that, yeah there well. you go I wouldn't kill for it. No. I'd pay for it and lie for it. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe him. That's about it. Allegedly. I wouldn't beg for it either. I have too much pride. (laughs) That's just not it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's see here. See if his other four videos. uh, uh, Doesn't look like his other ones have came in just quite yet. All right. Well, if we don't get to him this time, we can get to him on Thursday. We can move to him on that. And I would say, I think that is, uh, nope, Dung is Fun. The last one on YouTube here says, do not suck start a shotgun for $2. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So what do we have for the next uh, article? Uh, I am cleaned oh. up on my end. Jimmy, do you yeah, still have some stuff on your end? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, we can... Uh, bring up the stuff about uh, what we have in our arsenal. Mm-hmm. I know we had from... that General Flynn stuff. Where is it? At? Where is it? There it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. So let's, let's talk about the actual size of the Chinese military. All right. There we oh. go. No, no. Hang on. Hang on. No, we'll cover this. <laughs> this this is actually the anti-aircraft stuff we have in our, in our uh, arsenal here in the United States. Okay. So go back to that one. Let's go down the let list. Me, let me uh, do two, two. All right, uh, do, 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 do. where is it at? I know there this it is, is. A super chat, but I have to point this out. This is funny as hell. Uh, Pop, uh, this is Humble Pie says this. Pop, I would not pay for it. The divorce lawyers say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Chinese military strength? Yep, that is, on that, list. Yep, that is it right there. So what do we got here? Comparable powers. Let's see. Go back up. Oh. Right, now click on one of. Uh, I can't read it from here. Here we go. Okay, so so at a glance. Yeah, at a glance. China is ranked three out of one hundred forty-five out three out of one hundred forty-five out of the countries considered for the annual global firepowers review. The nation holds a power index score of. Point zero seven two two, with the score of point of zero being considered exceptional in the GFP assessment. Hmm. So that would be they are a top five world power. They have the top GFP placement for at least ten consecutive years. Hmm. Okay. It's kind of, this country is a top 10 financial power according to its global standing in key <clears throat> categories. Uh, the country is a top 10 produ- global producer of natural gas. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, They are also a top 10 power, according to the GFP. We said uh, the country has noted a top 10 power in regards to total population. That's a given. That's their their number one, actually. Yeah. Uh, The country is a top 10 global producer of crude oil. Mm. A critical natural resource. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a big Uh, country, so I'm sure there's lots of oil fields there. Same thing with Russia. Yep. They are also a top 10 producer of coal. And uh, the country is a noted nuclear power under the Treaty of Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Yeah. There you go. That word. Of 1968. So, uh, let's just look at manpower here. All right. Uh, total population is 1. 1.4, 1.410 billion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the total manpower is 761 million, give or take some change and whatnot. Uh, fit for service, uh, 624 million. Wow. 8, mm-hmm. 869,113. So 44%. Wow. Better than us. That's for sure. Way better than us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reaching military age annually is 19,747,557. Mm. So 1.4%. That is number two out of 145. Mm. Uh, those last numbers that I gave, those are also one. So they are first in those numbers. Ooh. Active personnel is also number one. Active personnel is 2 million. And army personnel is number one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So, uh, that's nuts. Yep. All right. So what's their, what's their air power looking at here? Uh, now this is, let's compare, uh, the stocks are 3,284. Uh, their readiness is 2299. All right. Uh, and then I believe this breaks. Yeah. The, and then this breaks down the actual numbers. Uh, the fighters gotcha. are eleven ninety nine. Readiness is eight hundred thirty nine. Okay. Uh, attack types uh, stock three hundred seventy one. Readiness is two sixty. Uh, fixed wings transports two eighty eight. Readiness is two hundred two. Uh, both uh, three three and two respectively. Uh, their trainers are fifth with 397 and 278 at the ready special mission. They are fourth with 112 stocks with 78 readiness. Uh, tanker fleet are their 10th, which, uh, these numbers are pretty bad. Uh, they have four in stock and three at the ready. (laughs) (laughs) 0.1%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, helicopters. They are again about third with 913 with uh, 639 ready to go. And attack helicopters, again, are uh, ranked third with 281, and readiness is 197. All right, now, I will say this. A lot of the Chinese equipment is basically Russian equipment, and we saw how well that Russian equipment has uh, worked for <laughs> Russia in the Ukraine fiasco that they Yeah. Did. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, those are impressive numbers. But there are things that you can't count on a spreadsheet when you look at armies. Yep. And uh, I will have to uh, disclose this. Uh, the uh, values are estimated in uh, green. So readiness is all estimations. But um, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, tanks and vehicles there, Pop. Uh, let's look at that. Uh, tanks, they have a total of, uh, they are fourth in line with 4950 stock and readiness is 3713. Okay. Pretty, pretty substantial. Vehicles, 174,300. Readiness is 130,725. Self propelled artillery is uh, 2795. 
Readiness is 2096. That one is fourth in line. And uh, what you're noticing here <clears throat> is the readiness numbers and the amount they have, there's like a 30% gap. That's fairly normal for, uh, yep. you know, for those types of places, I would imagine. Same thing with yep. Russia, I would think. Yep. Um, I will say uh, vehicles, they are second in line. Uh, towed artillery, they aren't doing too well. They're 12th in line with 1434 and the stock and readiness is 1076. Mm -hmm. And their rocket artillery, they're doing pretty good. They're second in line with 3145 in the stock and 2359 at the ready. Yep. That sounds about right. Those rocket yeah. things are devastating. It's the equivalent of an MLRS here in, a, in the <clears> United <throat> States. And yep. they will rain hell on you, man. Those things are scary. Yep. Um, and you know what? Just because, let's compare it to what we have here. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll go at a glance. Uh, now nah, we don't. We don't need that because I'm pretty sure we know what we're at. So, manpower. Uh, do, 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 do. available manpower. We have 148 million. 430,460. Okay. So that's over uh compared overall. to the pop Yep, compared to the population. So we'll go to fit, fit for service is 123,129,813 or 36.5% of the population. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to call bullshit on that. that. Yeah, I don't I don't believe that's correct. I don't believe that at all. All right. Here, I, here, military, I saw the worthless, feckless motherfuckers that came in, and it, it literally took me forever to whip them into shape. Here's another bullshit flag for you, Pop. All right. Reaching military age annually is 4,385,445. 1. 1.3% of our population. That puts us fifth in line. Yep. So, total military personnel estimated. Is one million eight hundred thirty-two thousand. Okay. Uh, we have uh, hundred one million three hundred ninety thousand active personnel puts us third in line, and reserve is four hundred forty-two thousand. That puts us twelfth in line. Okay. Now, according to this, for paramilitary, we have zero percent. So we are. Dead last in that aspect. Mm. Well, that those numbers are going to change. There's a lot yeah. of militias out there that are forming up. Yeah. Uh, Air Force personnel, we are number one on that with 660,107. Mm -hmm. Army personnel is 1,010,500. Puts us fourth in line. And Navy personnel, once again, we are first in line with 731,600. Wow. The Navy. There you go. That's, what do we have in tanks and, and stuff? Tanks. Okay. So for land forces. Yeah, there we go. In tanks, we have 5,500 in stock. Readiness is 4,125. That puts us third in line. Okay. Uh, vehicles, we are first. Uh, stock is 303,553. Readiness mm. is 227,665. Okay. Uh, Self-propelled artillery uh, sitting at an even thousand. Readiness is 750. Puts us in ninth place. Towed artillery. Uh, stock is 1339. Readiness is 1,004. Puts us 14th in line. Wow. And our MLRS rocket artillery is seventeen sixteen, and readiness is twelve eighty seven. Puts us in fifth place. Okay. Huh. Hey, it's not bad. It could be better. Yeah, it could be way better, but it could be know. a lot better. What are you going to do? Yep. But the thing is, is this next century coming up? It's not going to be about the amount of people you can put on the ground. It's going to be about the smart weapons, nukes, you know, um, drones, drone tanks, 
Yep. I mean, I mean, Russia's already already putting together drone tanks. They're using a lot of their T fifty fives, making them automated. There's no crew yep. in there, and a lot of those tanks, the weak part is the crew. A lot of those tanks, you can hit them, and if the tr- if the you know crew doesn't die, they'll be fine. But if it's automated and you hit it and the crew dies, it's still fine because it's now working auto. It's now working on autopilot. That's some scary shit right there. Yep. yep. Uh, covering a couple more chats that I saw come in on YouTube. Uh, you got uh, fan I am for two dollars recent, just in case. So thank you, sir. Uh, moving on down, scrolling through this really quickly. This is Shark Dentures here for $5. I remember watching some videos that the U.S. was destined to become a world power, no matter who was here, based solely on our geography and location. And it's Shark Dentures again for $5. And last that I saw here, Cliff3188, uh, another category not listed, are students within uh, or outside of China. If the CCP conscripts them, uh, they are considered uh, human military assets abroad. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's the same thing here. Yeah. So. And one thing we, I guess we can uh, also cover is our uh, number of subs that we have. Yeah, that's important. Mm. That's, that sh- should be a really big important one because uh, what the planet is, uh, 70% water. Yep. <laughs> Just about should be a good seven. idea to... Uh, cover that much water yep but uh according to this one we both have uh we have china china with uh allegedly 74 subs 74 okay 74 uh the ruskies have 66 and us over here we have 69 nice okay all right it's it's pretty even (laughs) yep so and I'm sure a lot of those are. And here's another thing that uh, needs to be talked about. If shit gets really bad, we do have an ass load of subs and ships in, mo- in the mothball fleet that we could pull out. So, I mean, yep. there is that. And we are incredibly skilled at uh, coordinating between all of the services for combined arms operations which makes us at the makes the united states incredibly lethal in that regard so i mean we saw what russia's doing i yeah. mean they can't i mean i shouldn't say this right now because they're starting to pick up the pace but mm-hmm. prior to this they couldn't coordinate to save their ass <laughs> I, i'm serious yeah i mean they had no air force uh, their uh, helicopter pilots were, uh, you know, not really around. Uh, they didn't use their infantry and armor correctly. They got their asses handed to them. In fact, what they're doing now is they're falling back on the old USSR doctrine of ground and pound. And so far, it's being somewhat effective against Ukraine. Mm, yep. And I'm sure China, was, China's not will, far behind. We'll say this. I have seen a few videos on Twitter that allegedly are showing videos of a uh, let's just say small commercial or not commercial but a uh, little drones that you can buy mm-hmm. and they're flying over foxholes and let's just say they're dropping not so nice presents to alleged russians in those holes i have seen um, that footage and it is scary <laughs> scary and it is really difficult to watch yeah, really difficult it, to watch. It's, it's war. Listen, we're evil, mm-hmm. hairless monkeys. We mm-hmm. enjoy killing each other. We spend an insane amount of money figuring figuring out new and inventive ways <laughs> to kill yet even more people. It is crazy. Yep. We're never going to become like an interstellar race because we're going to kill ourselves long before we get there. Yeah, uh, but um, I will uh, bring this uh, question to you guys. Uh, what do you think the top five countries with the uh, total military personnel would be? I would say it would be India, China, United States, Russia, and mm. I don't know about the fifth one. No. What do you think, Rhino? What are you? What are your choices? 
Um, let's go with the United States, Russia. Uh, well, no, China, then Russia. India is a big country, so I agree with him there. But as far as the the next one in line, um, I mean, I would think it'd be France or England. Yeah, maybe, maybe the UK. Yeah, you'll be surprised because here's the top ten. Wow. Number one is a uh, Vietnam, Vietnam with with ten and a half million. Wow. No shit. So that's a hundred and eight point four per th- one thousand capita. You have North Korea with seven point seven. Well, we'll just call it seven point seven million. South Korea with six point seven million. <clears throat> and India with five point one million. And China with four million. Now let me let me ask you something here, Pop. You would probably know this uh, better than any of us. Uh, sure, they have big numbers, uh, but you look at North Korea and China and Russia in particular. How many of those are willing and happy participants um, that are willing you. to fight? Yeah. Like North Korea, literally, they could take <laughs> over South Korea uh, mm-hmm. if they wanted to, but they only have five days, maybe seven days worth of supplies. Uh, yeah. So if, if they can't pull it off in five to seven days, it's over for them. Yep. And I figured we just round it out. Russia, they got three and a half million. Mm-hmm. U.S. has 2.1 million. Brazil isn't too far behind us. Uh, Taiwan has 1.8 and Pakistan has 1.4. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't even expect Pakistan to be. On <clears throat> no, some of those yeah. are definitely a shock. Wow. Okay. So here, here's what the uh, most active duty. So this will give us a little better understanding. China with 2.1 million. Okay. India with 1.4 million, United States 1.3 million, North Korea is 1.2 million. And now what was what were they at? They were number 2 with 7 million. And this mm-hmm. is total personnel compared to and their active, active compared to active duty. So this will give yeah. us a better understanding. Russia has just over a million. Pakistan has 654,000, Iran 610,000, South Korea not looking too good, uh 599,000. Hmm. Now here's the biggest dip, Vietnam. Wow. 482,000 in active hmm. duty. Yet here they are with the highest total number of military personnel. So on standby, that's interesting. Um, yeah, they have like a reserve national guard system or something like that. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. then last is Egypt with 438,000. Wow. Egypt's on that list. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then we're looking at the same ones about the same. Yeah. Pretty much the same, uh, same, uh, Contenders here with the uh, top countries, countries with the highest number of active duty and reserves. Okay, there you go. So there's your active duty and reserves. Yep, yep. That puts Vietnam with the uh, with the uh, reserves. That puts them back up to number number one. Well, another problem uh, you're seeing the United States at these numbers now, but uh, again, Pop, you've mentioned retention rates and even recruitment. Yes, um, with, I'm, I'm sure these numbers are going to be much lower uh, and soon. Well, yeah, and like I predicted, they're, if this continues, they're going to have to go back to the draft in like three to four years. Yeah, wow. I mean, you can't miss your recruiting rates by fifty percent year in year in and year out and not have to draft people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I've looked at some of the older mobilization plans, and even I, I'm medically retired. If it gets bad enough, they'll call me back to do mm-hmm. God knows, I don't even know. But yeah, I mean, it's nuts. It's absolutely not insane. good, man. Not good. Not good. Uh, do but, we have uh, any more super chats? Uh, no. On my end, nothing that I can see on Rumble or D Live. Okay. Again, if I'm missing on D Live, I apologize. I don't see any lemons or anything here. But uh, if I miss you, yeah, I am sorry. Uh, yeah, we got a uh, Shark Dentures here with five dollars. I remember watching some videos that the U.S. was destined to become world power, no matter who was here, based solely on our geographic geography and location yeah you are correct look we make sense if we were able 
In fact, we have the ability to become totally self-sufficient in energy, food, medicine, industry. All it takes is the will to make it happen. We already have the skill because we've already done it. The infrastructure, a lot of it's dilapidated, but it could be rehabilitated. We could easily do this. Easily. Um, Why? Uh, I would have to say uh, corruption and people want to make more money. So they outsource to other countries for those people who work for uh, like a nickel an hour as opposed to paying people, you know, anywhere from eight to twenty five dollars an hour for the lower end workers. So, I mean, it is what it is. Maybe at the end of the day, our own greed is going to be our downfall and our own greed and corruption. Yeah, yeah that, I would I would agree with that. Yeah, and I know that uh you know China is really feeling the population pinch because they're having a huge amount of people aging out and not enough young people to uh, work and support the the nation. And they have something similar to us here in America, which we call MGTOW. They have the individuals who lay flat, meaning mm. they are not working, they don't give a shit. They see the whole system is stupid, and all they want to do is take care of themselves and stay out of the limelight. So, it, it, I mean, and the same, it's happening in Japan. I mean, it's pretty much happening in the yeah. Western world. Yeah, I would say it's happening all over the place too. Yes, it is, and and it, mainly it's because you know they destroyed the family. <laughs> uh, they've cheapened masculinity to, to the point where choking on soy boys who can't even make a decision if they're a man or a woman by the time they get to their teenage years. Yeah, no what kidding. What the hell is that about? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and if it happens too early, by the time they get to their teenage years, it's going to be too late. It, yeah, it is too late. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, listen, you put a nine-year-old kid on puberty blockers, you and, and then maybe three years later, he decides not to do it when he's like 11 or 12. He's screwed. behind the power curve for the rest of his life yep. because yep. he screwed with his growth patterns. That's yeah. insane. Yep. You also have one here because we did cover uh, that one in Cliff. Just wanted to get uh, caught up here. We have Dung is Fun uh, for $5. Uh, Pop, what should I do uh, to not get drafted? Okay. Uh, that is a little more difficult. Um, for instance... If they have the top tier draftees have no medical issues and then they go down a level and from there they pick individuals who can, you know, have decent eyesight, decent hearing. Maybe they have one or two things that is, that's holding them back like weight or like, um, like some kind of minor birth defect. And then as it gets worse, it gets to the point where they'll take anyone. So if it gets bad enough, there's really nothing you can do to stop yourself from getting sucked into the meat grinder. All right. I, I, I know that's not the answer you wanted. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> yeah. All Facts, right. not feelings. <laughs> Damn right. And looking back over here on Odyssey, it looks like we have a few here. All right. From uh, Ink Mercenary Guy. A woman walks in on her husband screaming at the TV, run, you stupid bastard, run. So she asks, what's he watching? He says, our wedding video. <laughs> <laughs> I like wow. it. That's good stuff. <laughs> Let's see, uh, of course, we got Jackal the Emperor here with one dollar. He says, uh, what's going on, you rectal wreckers, bony drinkers and blood colored animals? Communist <laughs> probes corrupter than the butt water politicians. An imminent national collapse, topics, and doom galore. Are we mm. ready for battle and death? I'm probably not, but Listen. I'll have stuff for the BS report later. All right. Everyone's mm. eligible for death because you're alive. It's yeah. Just that yep. Pretty much and a guarantee in the say, contract. I don't believe in war. That's fine. <laughs> war mm. believes in you. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> that needs to be on a shirt. All right. And that from you. From YouTube here really quick, we've got John Good Ship for $5. This, this one I'm not sure I understand, but uh, fill me in if you guys know something I don't. It says Russia will win this war by July. Okay. Oh, they could. 
I mean, they're trying to bring another 600,000 people uh, to the front in Ukraine, and Ukraine has taken some serious losses. I don't think they have the horsepower to, to fight that back. Well, not, yeah. not when we just sent them 31 we, Abrams tanks. That's what I was just, just about to ask. Why? Never mind. It's a Biden administration. <laughs> I don't need to ask the why anymore. Yep. <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, that's why. There you go. And we got Cake Hammer again over here on Odyssey with a dollar. He says AOC equals absolutely zero competence. <laughs> yep, that and all out cunt. Yeah. See, I I pre I like mine a little bit better. It says uh annoying opinionated cunt. <laughs> Sounds refreshing. Yes. I'm glad you guys love uh you know the whole cunt thing. Yeah. Uh, I've been using it for probably over 30 years. <laughs> And I added the, you know, sounds refreshing, but it really isn't. And that basically came from a Shasta commercial back in the day. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was actually, uh, I was actually thinking the other day and uh, MGTOW Mando on Gilded helped me out with this. We have a new uh, oh, abbreviation for cunt. Oh, God, uh, you guys. That's what Cru- Crusty Uncouth Nut Tickler. Ah, okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, got it. All right, so we're out of super chats. Uh, oh, we got yeah. one here from Shark Dentures for five dollars. Our intricate uh, waterways helped make us an economic power, and our isolated island-like location forced us to learn to project power around the globe. Absolutely correct. Yeah. And I forty-nine on Odyssey with the dollar says, "Hey, pop." Uh, there any way you can get Matt Bracken on the show? Um, well, send me his contact information to redonkless12 at gmail.com and I'll reach out to him. Let's see, I know. and it does look like we have the last four Instagram clips from Fan I Am. So let me bring those up here real fast. We can right. roll through these. While you're finding that, fill up all of her holes for $5 on YouTube. Uh, Pop, the draft will take everyone at one point. Uh, They'll stop worrying about medical and weight. However, they won't create a good militia. No, they will not. No. No. All right, here we go with the clips from Fan Monkey in Thailand named Godzilla has been sent to a special facility to lose weight. Official realized the monkey was overweight when a bunch of black guys kept hitting on it. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh, it just got dark in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see what this one is here. Well, hang on. Close the windows. Our fault. Apologies. Mm-hmm. There. No. Right. Oh, oh, there we go. What we got? Oh. Guy going in the fridge. Oh. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, she saw oh. she hit him in the ass. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, that's uh, what's the next one? We already saw that one. That one's difficult to watch. Yeah, listen, everyone takes a shot in the balls once in a while. Oh, <laughs> bad news bears, man. Bad news <laughs> right. bears. We've all been there. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Let's see what do we got here. Oh, no sound here, but. Oh, right in the mouth. I'm throwing a water balloon at him. <laughs> oh, I love man. it. Yeah. 
All right, last one here. You got it. Got it. Let's see right. here. Joke you got for us. I'll refresh it here. Welcome. What's the slow burn joke you got for us? So when my husband and I first started going out, um, he was a really bad snorer. And what he told me was when he lay on his back, his balls would cover his anus and create an airlock. <laughs> 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 No way. Just test by picking them up to see if they were blocking the blocking his two hole. I I cradled his balls for three years before I picked it up. Oh shit. No. What a legend. <laughs> All right, welcome. What's all right, all right, oh, that's a good one right there. I think, that's a, good, I think that's right. a good one to uh, end the show on. All right, <laughs> ready for the safety briefing? Safety okay. briefing. All right, gentlemen, don't drink and drive and don't drink and swim. Don't uh, fire up a blunt and drive because that's really not going to end well for you. Wear a condom, take it with you, or flush it down the toilet. Or better yet, don't miss with trashy women because now there's incurable gonorrhea. Keep your head on a swivel. If you have to fight, don't go to the ground because that's where you get stomped out. If you have to use a weapon, use it to kill because it's better if there's only one person telling the story. There you go.